Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to some more Endless Scrap Mechanic. It's time for Top of the Shop, and before we get into the best builds of the week, I want to thank everyone for getting the automated road and bridge builder to the top of the shop. It's a really cool build. In case you did miss it, I'm going to leave a link up in the top right corner of the screen. So thank you to everybody for checking out that build on the Steam Workshop. I hope you had some fun with it. Uh, but without further ado, let's check out Top of the Shop. First up, we're going to be checking out an RA Warrior created by Kejikio. Now, this looks like some type of battle mech build. Oh, man, this is looking really cool. Now, I think it's all vanilla as well. Oh, wow. The armor plating using all of the different parts. Oh, this is a cool looking mech. So I guess we're just going to hop into the seat up here. It seems like we are the head of this mech. So it's almost more like uh, an armored suit more than anything here. Uh, but let's see now we can turn left and right. Oh, wow. The smooth turning on that. That is so neat. So well, let's press one here and see. Oh, whoa. Okay. Hold up. Wow. Okay. One brought us directly into flight mode and hold on when I press W oh wow look at this I'm just holding down W and it is walking wow that looks so cool there's like a wheel it's a two wheel system driving these legs wow that is so cool now we've got some buttons here which involves shooting spud guns nice and what is this I guess this is like a a defensive position maybe just kind of like bring up the armor plating there on your side and then we also have oh man we got a rocket punch did you see that oh that is so cool wow oh my god okay so when I press four look at this it spins up the rocket punch and then it sends the fist out now if I just keep holding it down okay yeah it's just gonna keep it extended there but when you let go of it it just retracts right back in oh that is so cool Man, I gotta say, this is such a cool build. It's doing things I was just not expecting, you know? And the way it walks, the rocket punching fist, and of course, the flight capability, this thing has it all. Next up, we've got a gyro stunt flyer that's all vanilla created by Tamatsu. So it did say that this is a stunt flyer, so I'm sure it's going to be capable of more than just your normal flight. Now, let's see. Okay, we can go forward here. There's a lot of buttons that control everything. Whoa, okay, this thing is quick in the air. And then what do we have for seven? Seven is like just stabilizers. Okay, so this thing is extremely steady. Wow, look at this. We're just like flying a platform right now. So I'm gonna try and do some like frontward somersaults. Let's see if we can maybe turn the thrusters off and do the somersault one more. Do we have time for one more? I don't think we're gonna have time for one more. Oh wait, no, we're going to the cave. We might have time. Okay, not really. And now we're gonna be taking a look at the mobile base truck survival created by Lady Grilka. Now this is a survival themed build I think I even heard the uh, craft bot on the inside there so this is all vanilla of course and it looks absolutely awesome all armored up all of the different metal components so in the front we do have our driver's seat because this is of course a mobile base and ooh, look at that we've got four wheel steering at the front so the driving feels extremely smooth and of course with that four wheel steering we have all sorts of turning capabilities here. So we might as well just kind of follow this path for a moment. See what the first person is like. Ooh, yeah, look at that. I love the side view mirrors as well. You know, they they don't work but having that detail just makes all the difference. So from here there seems to be no entrance into the mobile base up on the roof as well. Now the back here okay we've got a switch let's press the switch oh I just noticed too there's chests here as the back bumpers okay hold on I think we might be might be getting a little stuck oh there we go okay so we've got the door to the survival base opened up now here we go up inside of the base I suppose we could shut the door there we go so to our right it seems like we have just like a little sink here little wash place and a little bit of an eating table and then we have four storage chests here all synced up together and look at that they are hooked up right into this craft bot now this looks really cool the craft bot and everything they're just kind of like floating here in the uh, in the center there's no bottom or anything or base to the uh, to the craft bot which I find to be uh, rather interesting and then we have our bed right here as well now 
I guess there is no survival bed in creative mode at the minute, is there? So at the moment, there are no cook bots in creative mode. Now, I wonder if that's something that might change in the future, because I would imagine, you know, if this was in survival, you would definitely have things like your cook bot as well. Uh, just because, you know, making food is, it's rather important. So I gotta say, this mobile base is absolutely awesome. It is loaded up full of stuff, and it drives extremely smoothly as well. And I think this should serve as a great inspiration if you are gonna be doing any type of mobile bases in survival for yourself. And now we're gonna be going back in time to 1930. This is the 1930 created by the Master. Now this looks like a replica of like a really old school Ford Motors kind of vehicle of sorts and this looks really cool. So we might as well just hop in to the driver's seat. Let's take a look inside here. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, so there is glitch welding. There are a whole bunch of seats in the back there stacked on top of each other. So there is obviously glitch welding involved, but I definitely think it's helping with the aesthetic here because man, all of the interesting different shapes and stuff are just impossible without that. So let's take this thing for a drive. We've got this pathway here on the road and we're gonna take it, go for a little bit of a spin here. And wow, this thing is handling really well. Now I think one thing that's really helping it is it's not too fast, right? So if you control your speed in a vehicle, you can usually adjust your results that way. But this thing is driving really smoothly. And we've got ourselves a couple switches here. We might as well take a look at them. So we got one, and that is the lights on the front. Wow, there are so many lights there pointing forward. And then two, we've got the rear lights here as well. And those lights look really cool, glitch welded with the duct around them. It adds like a really nice looking little bracket effect. So we're gonna move forward in time with this car. This is the Lincoln Town Car Convertible created by Yarek23. Now this seems to be another all vanilla build. Wow, okay, this thing is a little bit bigger. Wow, there are a lot of switches for a car. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have some stuff to take a look at here. Now, first of all, just looking at the car though, it looks so good. The front windshield design looks absolutely awesome. Uh, so let's start going through the switches though. We got one, okay, we got one, which is the headlights and the tail lights. Two, two is uh, an extra set of lights or it changes what lights are on. And then we got three. Okay, so three is the left blinker, which means four is probably the right blinker. And then five is the hood. Okay, we got a little bit of a paint problem here. There we go. Let's take a look inside the hood. Oh, wow, look at that. All of the work that went into the engine. And you can see that's where all of the components are for the logic as well. Really cool. So let's just shut the hood back down again. And then we're gonna press six. Now six is opening up the tail there. Now, okay, we haven't seen anything convertible related yet, so I'm not too sure. Uh, but there we go, we got the trunk there. So I'm not sure what seven is doing, but we also have eight, which is the horn. And then we have nine. Wait, what? <laughs> Okay, we've got some hydraulics on this bad boy. I I didn't think that was going to be a thing, but there we go. And then we also have zero, which is the rear hydraulics. Wow, look at this. We can get the bounce going. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. So I got to say, this car just looks so awesome. It looks really mean. It looks like it has a lot of power under the hood. I mean, just look at the size of that hood to begin with. Uh, so this is a really awesome convertible. There is no top to go on it, uh, but I think that's fine because those kinds of things can tend to really bring the frames down in a creation. Uh, so either way though, this thing looks really, really awesome. So moving a little more forward in time with the cars, we've got an FSD Sporty RX No Mods created by Infinity. So this looks like something with a little more zip in it than the first two cars that were a little more old school. And this thing looks really awesome. It's looking a lot like a, uh, a rally vehicle of sorts. So, I mean, let's just take it for a spin here. Now, this thing is already feeling much faster, way more stable than the first two cars. Wow, okay, this thing is really fast. So if we press one, what happens? Oh, look at that. Ooh, okay, we got some nitro. We got some nitro boost in there. We got two, which is a door. Exciting, very exciting door there. And then we also have two more switches. Okay, these seem to be just more lights. So it took me a moment to notice this, but pressing four, look at this. It 
puts down a little hidden compartment with spud guns. So this is like a spy rally car of sorts. Uh, so it's really cool too because you can't shoot those spuds until you've lowered the, uh, the box down and then you can start shooting them. All right, so we're gonna take this rally car to the best jump in creative mode. We've got the double jump. We have thrusters on this thing if we need them as well. So let's go now. We're gonna do the double jump. No thruster yet. Okay, might need a little thruster here. Oh, okay, we came up a little short. All right, so now I'm at the bottom of this canyon. I suppose we should probably get something to get out of here. And this next creation might just be perfect for that. This is a StarCraft II blank. Now, I believe these are all in Chinese characters, so I can't read it. But this is created by Jackie, and I believe this is a StarCraft II Turin Wraith. I'm not 100% sure. I've only ever played the original StarCraft and Brood Wars, so I'm not too familiar with StarCraft II. Now, let's see. Okay, I already see we've got some explosives, which is kind of scary. And, ooh, I like this. These thrusters are mounted on the blades, which means there's a good chance it's probably going to be functional. So I suppose we should just hop into the cockpit. There we go. Now I wonder, is one just going to shut it? Okay, there we go. Yep, yeah, one has shut the cockpit. I don't know any of the controls because I can't read them, so we're just going to be guessing here. But here we go. Okay, the blades are spinning. And three. Three is going up. Oh, our, uh, our wheels, our landing gear went up automatically. Okay, are we just going to exit... No problem here. There we go. Okay, we're out of the canyon. Oh man, this is looking really cool now. There are some different switches. Now hold on, we're just going up and up and up. Uh, so let's see, we got five. Oh man, look at that. There is something so cool about having spud guns mounted to suspension. I mean, just look at that bounce back action. Oh man, that is so awesome. Okay, so since there is no deployable bombs, I'm gonna guess that this is more about being able to fight your friends in like some dog fights in the air with these creations. So I guess what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to manually detonate this bad boy. So here we go, let's take a shot right there. See what happens. Oh my, yes, that's, that is actually exactly what I expected to have happen. And next up, we've got the adjustable F1 created by SJD. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess that this is an F1 race car with some adjustable things. So let's see, what do you think we can adjust? Okay, we've got some bearings here on the front wing as well as the rear spoilers. Here we got the double wings on the rear spoilers, and I think those are the wing mods as well, actually, so we are gonna see some moderately aerodynamic effects in this. So, okay, I'm not too sure what we're gonna get to adjust here. We've got one single switch, and by the way, have you noticed just how massive this thing is? This F1 car is giant. So, let's see, what is our adjustment? Oh. Okay, then it looks like we are raising up off of the ground now. That is interesting So it seems like that is our adjustment just the ground clearance, which I guess is uh, it's better than nothing now. Okay, this suspension There's some weird stuff going on with those wheels now It is doing a pretty good job staying low to the ground sticking to the ground even though we're hitting all sorts of these little bumps You can see those wheels are definitely working into overtime right now. But even with the wheels down like this, it seems like we're not having any issues whatsoever. Now, if we do drive it with the uh, the modification here with the ground clearance, it seems like, yeah, this is, it's a little bit smoother by the looks of it. There is one thing I wanna try out here. I think we can maybe manually make some adjustments here. So these are used to keep the vehicle down, glued to the ground, so what happens if we spin these around. I guess we should expect to see the opposite of being glued to the ground. And oh yeah, look at this. Wow, okay, now we are just permanently popping wheelies in this F1 car. Now, I don't think we will ever be able to be completely airborne. We kind of need the ground for the wheels to move us forward to gain that momentum. But I mean, look at that. We were able to adjust this F1 car and see some very different results. So we've seen quite a few vehicles today that involve having multiple wheels for driving around, but what if we flip that and we say, you know what, only one wheel, and that's what we got right here. This is the monowheel created by Chris 
And so, I mean, it's exactly what it says. It's a mono wheel. We have one giant wheel here that we are going to be riding on. And this thing looks really interesting. I'm kind of having a hard time imagining what this is going to really look like. But here we go. Okay, okay, hold on now. Okay, it seems like we got something free spinning inside here that looks like it might connect to the exterior wheel. Okay, hold on, look. Oh, we just moved a little bit. Okay, so let's see what these switches do. We got one. Oh, there it is. So one is going to move that wheel into the other wheel. So what is this? Is this like a gear? Oh, wow. Look at that. As I press W, it spins that upper wheel and it moves the larger wheel on the exterior. Wow, that is so cool. Now, what does two do? Oh, two is thrusters. Okay. So we can just turn on some thrusters and just start wheeling away without that extra gear. Now look at this thing, we're a mono wheel. It's super stable. Now the question is, can we go faster than this? Now I guess maybe if we use both the thrusters and the gear at the same time. Okay, we're doing it. Now I'm really curious to see what is first person like in a mono wheel. And we're gonna turn on follow cam for this as well. Oh wow, this is so weird. Now obviously this thing is extremely stabilized. We've got some suspension glitches keeping this thing upright. Otherwise it would of course probably be falling over every single time we try and move more than a couple feet. Uh, but either way, this thing is working like a charm and I love the two different drive systems. We can go with the thrusters or we can just go with the gear system. And for the last creation of the day, we're going to be taking a look at an ice cream shop. And I'm really excited for this because it's summer. It's really hot, especially while I'm recording this. Now, already I am seeing this looks absolutely awesome. On the outside here, we have a patio with some nice pastel colored tables, really fitting for an ice cream parlor. And look at these umbrellas. They are actually satellite dishes flipped over. And that's such a cool thing to see. So I guess the customer entrance is over on this left side here and oh man, look at that. Look at these ice cream cones. I think these are like safety cones or pylons flipped upside down with something on top of them. And they look exactly like ice cream cones. Wow. Okay, this is really cool. Let's go in here. Nice automatic door and look at that. There is a fire extinguisher already. So I suppose we walk in and then this is the first thing you're greeted with is a serving counter. So we would be able to grab our scoops of ice cream or gelato right here. And ooh, look at that. I love this. We've got ourselves a golden ice cream cone. Surely this ice cream parlor has won many awards. And so we've got the interior here and man, that is Looking really cool. I'm getting some old school diner style vibes as well, which is absolutely perfect for this ice cream parlor theme. Oh man, this is so awesome. And look at that. These are used as garbage cans. That is such a clever usage for something. Oh man, that is so cool. So now this is the panel right here with all of the switches. So I suppose we should probably check what all of these do here. So we got that one for the lights. Oh wow, okay, this looks way better all illuminated. And then we have another one here, which uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's more lights. I bet you, you know what? All four of these are probably set up for lights. If I'm like reading into this right, all the white painted ones are the lights. And then we also have this one here. Okay, that is the gate over there as well. Okay, and then we have this red one. Whoa. Oh my. Okay, there's an alarm system. You know what, it's summer, it's hot. I'm sure people would be after the ice cream, so you definitely want to keep it nice and safe. So then back here, I suppose this is probably like a walk-in freezer or maybe somewhere that you would store all of the ice cream. Okay, well that looks like there's a vault here. Okay, so there's a vault in an ice cream shop. Now what do we have here? This is another little door. Oh, okay, so this is like a little employee bathroom or something like that in the back here. And now I wasn't sure what was going on here, but there is a switch. Look at this little switch, sneaky little switch hidden in the back here. Now, if I press that, look, we're opening up the vault. And what is inside? Well, it looks like there's nothing inside. Now, overall though, this build in terms of detail is just so good. Every little inch of this build has something to look at 
something to see and feel and I think that's probably the thing I love most about these kinds of builds it's just seeing all of the different details that get placed and it's so much fun to build like that so this is just really inspiring so guys, that is going to be the video for today. I sure hope you did enjoy it. Now, if you did enjoy these builds or the video, then let me know by hitting that like button. And if you want to tune in for some more endless scrap mechanic, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Maybe even turn on some notifications so you get the latest and the craziest coming from me in scrap mechanics. So thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you in the next one. So bye for now.